morning and welcome. You're watching Market Movers. I'm Mini Menon. Uh, but before we get down to Market Movers and tell you which are the stocks that are moving the markets, let's get you a management check. Uh, GCPL came out with numbers uh, and uh, they were pretty decent numbers. Revenues up 6%. Margins uh, uh, an improvement about uh, 2% uh, in margins. Vivek Gambhir, MD at GCPL, joins us now. Vivek, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, First up, of course, it's been a challenging quarter for most players in the FMCG segment. Uh, what were the key uh, takeaways on how business is looking going forward based on these numbers? Uh, good morning. Uh, clearly, I think uh, the focus for the industry still remains on reviving uh, volume growth. And our volume growth was uh, uh, around 9%, which was far ahead of the industry growth. At an overall industry level, though, you know, we are seeing some pickup. So about 12 months ago, volume growth for home and personal care was less than 1%. That growth has moved up to about 5%. Growth is still lower than what we were anticipating. And growth in quarter three was softer than quarter one and quarter two. So in that sense, growth still remains a bit subdued. But clearly things are looking a lot better uh, than what they were about 12 months ago. I think the future prospects for the industry will depend on how quickly the economic uh, recovery happens. If the pace of the economy picks up, we should see further improvements in consumer demand. And from our perspective, I think as we look at our strategy, we will remain very focused on investing behind our brands. We have a very robust innovation pipeline. We are investing a lot in distribution. So net-net, we feel quite hopeful and confident that we will be able to sustain and improve our performance going forward. You know, we've had some time to uh, look through these numbers, Vivek, and I'm going to ask you uh, some of the questions that have been raised by analysts. One is that, you know, one would have thought you would have got far better raw material cost benefits uh, or reduction benefits. It hasn't come through. And the, the industry uh, norm seems to be an increase in ad spends uh, really uh, to, uh, as you rightly said, keep volumes going. So you've had to really, um, you know, uh, spend to get customers. Uh, um, uh, your quick comments on these two and do you see this as a continuing trend? So as far as you know gross margins are concerned, you know our gross margins for this quarter for the India business were 59.4 percent. So we saw 430 basis points improvement in gross margins for our India business and a 430 basis points improvement in gross margins for a consolidated business. And so that is a very sizable improvement in gross margin. Clearly we benefited from uh, the raw material pricing environment, but the teams have also been working very hard to put in some very good cost reduction programs in place. Also our sales mix has changed towards more higher margin products. So a combination of sales mix cost reduction along with the benefits of commodity prices has enabled us to really improve the gross margins and a substantial amount of this gross margin is actually fed into even EBITDA margins where we saw almost a 200 basis points improvement in EBITDA margin. On the marketing side, our focus is to invest competitively behind both our core categories as well as invest in some of our future brands. And so while we have seen some marginal increases in our marketing investments, those are within a range that we feel comfortable with. And typically, you know, our counsel is to look at marketing spends over a year's period because there will be some quarterly variations depending on new launches. But net net, we feel very comfortable that we are investing competitively behind our brands and also plowing money back into the bottom line. How is the rural market doing, Vivek? And uh, because that's been the big worry point for a lot of the FMCG companies. Take us through uh, whether you're seeing a pickup, uh, what are the categories that are under pressure, uh, and uh, what the prospects are looking like. The rural markets clearly have been under stress uh, for the last couple of uh, quarters. Uh, particularly given the impact of two years of uh, poor monsoons, some rationalization of uh, government subsidies 
and also generally falling global agricultural uh, prices. For us, rural continues to grow faster than urban. So in the last quarter, our rural growth was about 9%, our urban growth was 7%. Having said that, typically rural growth for us has been at least 500 basis points ahead of urban. And so in that sense, we are also experiencing uh, a slowdown and challenges in the rural environment. Uh, for us though, urban is still about 75% of our business, so we are more urban skewed. And that's why you also saw us deliver volume growth that was far ahead of the overall industry growth. Going forward, we will have to be watchful. I don't expect too many improvements in rural in the quarter ahead because the outlook on rubby crop does not seem to be that great. Having said that though, I think the government is uh, making a very concerted effort to try and drive rural economic growth. Once the eco economy picks up in rural, we should start seeing benefits as far as FMCG demand is concerned because across at least our categories, penetration levels for in rural are still very low and so we do uh, hope to see better rural performance in fiscal year 17. Last question on the international operations. From what I understand, Africa operating margins have declined by 100 basis points. Uh, Viveka, can you take us through the highlights over there and what are the concerns? So on the Africa side, again, margins still are very healthy. So we had an 18% uh, EBITDA margin in Africa. The Africa business has been scaling up quite well. There are some near-term challenges in terms of currency devaluation. And particularly since we import a lot of our raw materials, there is usually a bit of a lag between uh, the time we can increase prices versus when costs go up. And so there will be a bit of an inherent choppiness in Africa margins and so our suggestion again is to look at annual margins for Africa. We also are investing heavily in new brands. So we've launched a new brand called Aliana in Kenya which is our foray into wet hair products. And so the combination of new uh, brand investments along with some of the currency pressures leads to some volatility in margins but overall we still are very happy with how the business is scaling up and you will see improved performance going forward as well. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm going to ask you a last question on uh, currency uh, and uh, the impact that you see. Most people are saying that the currency is going to weaken uh, considerably uh, this year and there are uh, figures of 70, 72 coming in on the rupee. Uh, what uh, have you penciled in for Godrej? Because you are, uh, as you rightly said, a big importer. Uh, what is the impact of the rupee going to be through the year? Uh, very difficult to say right now because, uh, as you know, it's an evolving, uh, you know, situation. Uh, for us, one of the impacts on currency will be in terms of, you know, palm oil prices. And so it's not just currency, but the overall level of palm oil prices, which does tend to affect our soap uh, business. But with weakening currency, I think there are some open questions around whether that will enable the industry to extract some more price-led growth. So I think overall at this stage, a little bit difficult to make a call on the impact of currency as far as our overall uh, business is concerned. But I think the focus at this stage again is really more on driving volume growth. And I think as long as we can drive volume growth, we should be able to deliver good returns with profit growth in line or ahead of sales growth next year. Vivek, we leave it there. Let's see if you can push through a price increase in a market like this. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, let's get you another management in now. Uh, Punj Lloyd has won an order worth 2,780 crores in Turkey. It's a big order win.